Welcome to the newest episode of Beatin' and Bangin'. I'm your host, Kyle Dalton. We've got a lot to discuss in our review of the weekend at Pocono, including Fox doing Fox things in the Truck Series race, Chase Elliott's interesting comments on the Bubba Wallace penalty from Chicago, Shane Van Gisbergen getting frustrated with Sam Mayer in the Xfinity Series race, and then Sunday's Cup race, which was pretty entertaining with a couple of relatively calm first couple of stages that turned into a wild and crazy final stage, including Corey LaJoy getting called out by Jeff Burton for hooking Kyle Busch, and ending with Ryan Blaney claiming his second win in 2024, and more importantly, positioning himself as someone very much in the title hunt and a legit chance of going back-to-back. I also have a little breakdown of Bush's weekend at Pocono, and I apologize in advance to Rowdy fans because it's a painful truth. I guess on the bright side, there's only one way to go, and that's up. However, before we talk about the two-time champion and the cup race, let's back up to Friday night and the truck series race on Fox. It had been a few weeks since I watched a race on Fox due to my vacation, and I had forgotten what I hadn't missed, but they reminded me. Here's your reminder. Hey, Ross, it's the Fox Sports team. Do you copy? I want to ask you a question. I'm not Ross. This is Sage Karen, but you can tell Ross I said hello. Oh, thanks, Sage. Uh, if we get a hold to Ross, I'll tell him you said your best. Kudos to Sage Karam for turning the awkward moment into something funny. And thanks, NBC, for your hard work. On Saturday, Cub drivers met with the media, and I wanted to highlight a couple of quotes of note that were the result of questions from Fox's Bob Pockris. First up, the veteran reporter asked Chase Elliott for his thoughts on the Bubba Wallace penalty from Chicago and if he thought it was warranted. I don't really think he should have been fined. I mean, I I understand. I mean, I, I get it, but man, you're you're getting in the weeds with some of that stuff and um, nobody was hurt and, you know, it was um, unfortunate, I guess, just the circumstances and Alex having won the race and things of that nature, but um, I didn't see it to be a a huge deal. Not exactly what NASCAR officials want to hear from their most popular driver. And next up is Kyle Busch's exchange with Pockris. Something wrong with the bearing down at the bottom of the firewall, so they got it straightened out. Is that something that you wouldn't have to go to the back for? You do not. You do not. So you're good. So how did it feel after you got it corrected? Steering felt normal. <laughs> how did the rest of the car feel? Not very good. You could tell by Bush's final comment that he wasn't exactly pleased with his car which qualified 24th. Unfortunately, it was only going to get worse. More on that in a bit. Moving on to Saturday's Xfinity Series race, which Cole Custer won for his first win in 2024, one of the most interesting things to me occurred with under 10 laps remaining when Sam Mayer straight ran into the rear of Shane Van Gisbergen and ended his day, which had started slowly, but he had steadily improved and was running 10th. During the conversation with his team over the radio about what happened, SVG learned there were some internal issues on the number one JRM car. Listen to this. I'll explain better later, but uh, Spotter said, uh, work on exit. And uh, then he's like, what What was that when he drove through us? So Spotter and driver are not on good terms at the moment. Mayor overcame the issues and finished 10th. SDG finished 31st, and after the race, Mayor Spotter unexpectedly warned his driver about possible retaliation. 97 is slow in uh, turn two. Tunnel turn on the bottom, but he has to come back to the checkered. I don't know if he's just taking his time or waiting on you, but heads up. Nothing happened with SVG, but Chandler Smith did confront Mayor on pit road and let him know he wasn't happy with his driving. Now, let's talk about Sunday's race, but before we dive into the racing action, First, let's discuss the second chapter of Kyle Busch's bad weekend, and it came before the race started when his car was on the grid and someone noticed it was leaking oil. The number eight crew rushed the car back to the garage and, according to Richard Childress, were helped by other Chevy teammates from Hendrick and Trackhouse in getting the car's under panel quickly removed to access and replace the oil line. While that was happening in the garage, Parker Kligerman interviewed the 39-year-old driver and talked with him about being in one of the toughest stretches of his career and how it's made worse because of his lack of speed. Yeah, no question. I mean, definitely. I, I don't think that uh, you can you can hem and haw or, or dance around the, that answer of that question because 
Uh, it is frustrating. More on Kyle later. Bush's former Joe Gibbs racing team had three cars with speed and were starting inside the top four, including Ty Gibbs, who started from the pole and led the first 17 laps before his JGR teammate Martin Truex Jr. assumed the point and rode it to the stage one win. But the 2017 champion, who will hang up his helmet from full-time racing in 2025, was none too pleased with the changes made on the number 19 car during the break and let his team know about it. I know, my car ain't very good right now. Yeah, I copy, I got it, man. She's doing best she can with it. All you did with the adjustments earlier is take the back out of the track in the fucking water spots to turn three. All right, well, the adjustments ain't fucking good. I don't know. I can't go nowhere right now. Pocono was a strategy race, and both tires and fuel came into play. Hamlin won another relatively calm stage, but things were about to get chaotic in that last segment. It started when Todd Gilliland was involved in a single car incident and ended a 16 lap stretch of green flag racing. During that pit cycle, multiple cars were unexpectedly caught speeding on pit road in section seven, including Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, Ty Gibbs, and Daniel Suarez. It was a curious rash of penalties in a section on pit road that caused some confusion with teams earlier in the day on their pit road runs before the race. Elliott's crew chief, Alan Gustafson, didn't sugarcoat what he thought about NASCAR's officiating and giving his driver a speeding penalty for the first time in 92 races. How much too fast were we? 0.16 mile an hour. I don't understand why the rest of the day had been okay. I don't feel like I was that much different. That zone was way off from the get-go. It's been way off. You know, you're just flying blind on it. It's been wrong, so just don't focus on it, unfortunately. They didn't admit their own fault there. Two laps into the next restart, and as the cars fanned out five and six wide going into through another three-car incident, Ty Gibbs brought up the last caution of the race on lap 134 when his engine grenaded. Ryan Blaney surged out front, and all I could think was, remember how awful the Fords were to start this season? They didn't win in the first dozen races. Fans of the Blue Oval should be pretty happy looking at the last nine races. They've won every other race starting with Brad Keselowski at Darlington and have won five out of the last nine races. One final thing of note, and it came in post-race interviews, and we're going to circle back to the LaJoy Bush incident. Here's what LaJoy had to say about what happened. I got a big push from the 16 uh, when you're... 20th back there, dude. You're, it's in the hornet's nest, and you're seven wide in a one. If you're not the guy in the bottom, some somebody, somebody else behind you is going to jam it in there and, and put you freaking middle, right? So I had a bit of a run. 16 gave me a big shot. I got to the left rear of uh, of the eight, and he blocked it once, and I just kind of held the wheel straight, and I was almost anticipating our bumpers kind of lining up and giving him a little bit of a shove, but when he blocked it the second time, it just turned him across my nose, and uh, you know, I had it tore up, tore up some good cars. Here's what Bush had to say. Uh, of course, you have mirrors and cameras and everything else, so you try to get in front of the run that's coming, and I was trying to get in front of that run, and um, sometimes some don't lift. Kamikaze. But I also want to play what Bush said to NBC during the broadcast. It seemed like there was um, an issue between you and LaJoy. Is there a conversation that needs to be had? Nah. That sounds like a guy that is really defeated. And when you look at his last six races, you know why. As he discussed with Parker Kligerman before the race, Bush is in one of, if not the worst stretch of his career. Going all the way back to his first full-time cup season in 2005 or 20 years ago, and you cannot find a worse seven race stretch than what he's currently experiencing, which is five DNFs, including four in the last five races. Sure, there are other periods where he's had some rough times, but it might be a few races with a top 10 or top five sprinkled in. It's been nothing like this. In other words, his feeling bummed out is totally understandable. All right, guys, that's a wrap on this episode. We talked about a lot, and I want to get your thoughts. Let's start with Bush. What are your thoughts on where he is this season, and do you see him improving this year? What about the race and Blaney's win? Are you surprised the Fords have come to life in the last nine races like they have? And what did you think about what happened between Bush and LaJoy, and particularly what LaJoy had to say about it? Is he going to get penalized for hooking the number eight car? And what about Alan Gustafson's comments on NASCAR getting it wrong on the speeding penalties? Do you think the sanctioning body got it wrong on those four cars? Remember, if you want to read my written work, go check it out at heavy.com. And be sure to check out my Beating and Banging podcast on the Blue Wire Network.
Thanks as always for supporting the channel and have a great rest of your day.